As I was planning my cross-country drive to go surfing in Baja, Mexico, I quickly ran out of space inside the Forerunner with all the food, water, and various equipment. I bought a roof cargo box for my surfboards, but I still needed to be able to store an extra 10 gallons of gas, 5 gallons of water, and 4 traction boards on the outside of the vehicle. I was on a budget and a time crunch, so I came up with this custom build hitch. I think it's a cheap option for overlanding or a quick bug out scenario. Even if you don't need or want a hitch extension, I'm hoping you can utilize the jerry can mounts. I was completely off the grid in Mexico for three weeks, so I think it was a good field test and here's how I made it. Harbor Freight welder. I am not good at welding by any means, just learning. Take this Harbor Freight ATV cargo carrier and uh, I'm gonna try to add an extension here so that way I can haul more gear because I, I really don't like how narrow this is. Some carriers will have like a uh, retaining bar here, but they're again, they're just a little narrow. So for what I'm trying to do, I wanna modify my own hitch and make it a little bit longer. They cut off some four inch sections of three quarter tube, steel square tubing. Oh. I did a quick hit on it and uh, didn't blow through, so I'll mess with the voltage some more. Well, it's pretty ugly, but it definitely tacked it, so here we go. I put off learning to weld for years because I was so intimidated, and uh, I hit the point where I just don't care. I want to be able to fuse metal together. I'm not super particular how it looks. I'm not trusting my life to these welds and uh, I don't want to pay someone to do it. So I hope this is encouraging. These 90 magnets are pretty neat until you realize what you should have done is welded it laying down because these two are on the ground and this one's flopping up in the air. I'm going to take the angle grinder and I'm going to cut them off, do it again. Just cut enough of a gap that I could sit these flush and they're still at 90 but uh, now they they're they run true all the way across it's a bigger gap to fill in with the weld now so that's gonna be a little bit harder and then I think we're about ready for some more ugly welds got the flap disc on the angle grinder and just gonna take a little bit of material off I'm gonna take the flap disc, take this paint off so I can get a good surface for some more below average welds. I've got it tacked in place. I'm still struggling with the settings. So I just remembered I was watching a tutorial on the internet and they were talking about stitch welding where if you have thin metal or you suck at welding, just do the little spots, work your way around, let the metal cool down, come back to it. So I'm still playing with the settings, but I'm gonna try that, just little spots. So that one, I just hit a little bit, didn't seem to blow through too much. Splatter, but the gaps, I've closed the gaps. So let's hit it with, uh, with the flap disc. All right, I ground them down. I'm not trying to win any awards, so I didn't want to grind too much material off. I figured a little more material makes it a little bit stronger and I can put all my weight on it. The jerry can holders, these mounts don't quite span the gap. So what I need to do is bridge that gap with some of this three quarter inch steel. And this is, uh, one eighth thick. And then, if all goes as planned, that'll sit on like that. And the jerry can will then be supported. I've got my 10 inch pieces of steel cut, so that way I can bridge the gap now for 
the jerry can holder. I think this is what you welders call stacking dimes, right? <laughs> I'm just gonna tack weld a few spots here just in case this screw comes out with vibration. I don't want the whole thing to fall apart. And then these are gonna be my mounting points for where it meets the carrier against the crossbar. You can see here, this is where I tack the metal in case the screw backs out because of vibration. And then this is where my support bar joins the hitch carrier. And then the hitch carrier got a tack there and a tack there. It's solid. Jerry can fits. I mentioned that I tacked these because of the review I read about the tack welds breaking and not relying on the screws. And then I just realized, well, I've got red Loctite here. So I'm just gonna Loctite these screws, save a ton of labor, and then I'm not gonna have as many potential rust points. My second project ever welding and getting a little bit better, getting the settings a little bit better, my technique. Got the dual can set up, coming along. One month update, driving cross country and back and three weeks in Baja down some pretty bad roads. Uh, overall, I'm happy with the hitch carrier, with the mods. Um, the thing is, I didn't have time to do any fancy mounts, so I just strapped on the traction boards uh, just to the extension that I made. And uh, happy with the jerry can mounts, but I think what I'd have to do is get some rubber adhesive, some kind of cushioning here, because when you're going down washboard roads, any of the rattle, what happened is, I got some wear marks that because of the salt water being near the ocean, they're already starting to rust. So I'm gonna have to deal with these. But um, other than that, worked out well just to have the extra water and 10 extra gallons of gas. As far as the ground clearance goes, I already pulled the hitch pin out, but having the raised hitch made a huge difference. Truthfully, I did drag it twice because I had to go through a deep ravine, a deep, uh, steep, steep face couldn't get any angle to it uh that sucked but um for most of the uphill and downhill stuff don't even come close to dragging it so for most uh camping things i think you'll be just fine with this kind of a setup it can always be improved upon but for what i needed it worked out great